Well, round one didn't just open the doors to this season's BMX Racing World Cup. It blasted them right off the hinges. What a first round we had. A first time in Rotorua, her first BMX World Cup in New Zealand. Fantastic place to come and to explore, to see some of the sights, the amazing ancient culture, the fantastic award-winning landscapes. The underground thermal springs, that geo activity that keeps this world alive. Well, it has created some spectacular landscapes you can come and visit, you can explore on foot, on the boat, you can paddle board your way around, and of course, you can jump on board your bike and explore what is an incredible landscape. And right in the heart of it, we have the track here today. My name's Matt Payne. I'm going to be running through the action with Wigan's finest voice. It's George Formby. It is the one and only Rich Eames. It's good to have you, Rich. Now, are you full of pie balm or uh, just coffee? I wouldn't like to say if I'm uh, keen on a pie based snack or not, but certainly I've had some coffee and I'm ready to go. Now, based on yesterday when we had a little bit of rain, Today's a little bit warmer, it's a little bit hotter, there's a little bit drier track. We've seen people actually damping down the track, which for anybody who's new, that basically helps bind it together. It should mean that we're going to get some quick racing today. Yesterday, though, it was fast and a new name at the top. Yeah, new name at the top, Taya Rufus of Australia, taking the win in women under 23. Came up from junior women last year where she took a fourth in that uh, UCI BMX Racing World Championships in Glasgow. So a uh, great debut for her in the under 23 category. Moving on to the men under 23, it was uh, the Greenock brothers who took one and two, and certainly a very, very uh, exciting fight. So great to see uh, a quick kickoff and some surprise names, maybe based on how the format was running through the heats in the under-23 competition. Moving on to our elites, the women elite standings. Well, you might look at that and think that's not a surprise really, but we did see some very interesting uh, racing on the way to that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was uh, busy, busy on the uh, women elite side of things, but uh, say it's Kakibara, she took the win. She picks up where she left off in 2023. Laura Smulders lo still looking for win number 28, though, in her World Cup career. So the men's elite standings, Robert Mayo up at the top with a full score of 500 points. But remember, we have six rounds, three different venues for the World Cups. And Rich, he's got a gap on Dodi again. He has, Roman Mayo. He's, uh, he's at top of the standings as we look at Axel Etienne doing a, a very unique warm-up there behind the scenes and uh, getting herself ready as uh, the Smulders sisters have conversations with their coach and uh, Meryl and Laura always happy, always smiling and always looking forward to some really good BMX racing. And the French camp have got to be delighted with Roman Mayo coming up with the goes Dode again, nailing this. Tessa Martinez though didn't really have the day at the office many were predicting. Uh, no, but uh, there's always another race, and today is the first of those races, so it'd be uh, good to see if Tess Martinez can get closer to the top of the podium this time around. And it's almost the same, isn't it, whether you are, whatever discipline you're racing, here at Rotary at the BMX Club, our riders really have to sort of almost turn the power off and switch it back on again and go again, don't they, if they've had a bad day. It is that classic reset yeah it's taking the time to just uh, like you say reset between races and you know turning it on turning it off and just being able to to bring the power and the intensity as and when you need it and that is a skill that these athletes have acquired over time and uh, they'll be bringing that to the fore today so our riders are ready to go racing here in Rotorua. this fantastic track long straight one of the tracks that really has shown that uh, it isn't always dependent on gate choice of where you start on the hill to head down. Yeah, we've certainly had a few riders coming out from, you know, gate six, seven, etc. And, uh, and winning uh, motors, semi-finals and things of that nature. And uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it turns out. Okay, let's get on to the racing. It is the men's quarterfinals in the under-23 competition. It's heat number one that's going to be kicking off the action here. Oliver Moran going to be looking to nail this. James Cutter Williams didn't have a good ride. He started well, but then it was a bad move on the uh, big berm. Dropped himself down. Just took himself almost out of contention, really, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't make it through yesterday. He ended up in that second spot.
So here we go. It is time to get the men underway here in the men's quarterfinals. It is heat number one. He won of the men's under 23 quarterfinals, Arco James Cutter Williams for Team USA, working his way across from the outside. Oliver Moran heading in towards turn number one. And Ben El Salazar, oh, over the bars in that first turn, and down he goes. So his lap over very, very early, and that's allowed Oliver Moran to get away from the riders behind him. And he's going to lead it into turn number two, going across that berm jump. So Moran out there in front, James Cutter Williams working his way up into three. I think the front four riders have worked out that they're out front and clear and all going to go through. It's just dependent on the order when they get to the finish line but there's no doubt who is out in front Oliver Moran of Australia taking it to the stripe he's going to make it through to the next stage Kelly A in two Jer Cutter Williams in three Jordan Callum going through in four but disaster for Ben El Salzar over Ecuador in that first corner yeah really came down heavy those games over uh, the uh, many seats here are uh, as always around the World Cup absolutely top notch tell us what went wrong what went right here Rich well he's uh, heading into the turn I don't know whether he just caught his front wheel or caught onto somebody else he just oh the the weight was too far forward it pitched him over the bars which caught the rider behind him meanwhile Oliver Moran was out in front Kelly was looking quite comfortable behind. It was just a battle with uh, James Cutter Williams. It was if he was going to pick up that third spot, and he picked it up at the line. So uh, the American going through to the semi-finals. Well, incident already on track, and we've only had our very first heat through. Just seeing Sayas Kakibara here, the elite women's winner in round one. And of course, now because we have just got that one round uh, complete so far, leading the series overall, leading our men's under 23 quarterfinals heat number one. Well, Oliver Moran comes through with a 37.611 time. The rest of the riders really cruising to a degree to come in and through. They're going to be looking to get the, their gate selection, but as we were saying earlier, maybe not as critical at this track as it is at the others. Well, time to see who is going to be able to get this nailed today. Great to see Joshua Jolly. He was riding very well. His positioning, really good, really smart riding in his races in round one. Can he repeat that here today? Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. Gate drops on quarterfinal number two for the men under 23. Harrison Davis of Australia looking like he got himself a good start, but it's Joshua Jolly and Marcus Lethe. We're going to lead into turn number one. So Jolly picking up the whole shot. Davis in there in three at the moment. We've got to Kogan of New Zealand back there in four, but it's all about Jolly. He was making some great moves in those turns in round number one, and he's got the pick of the line as he goes into turn number two. Harrison Davis going really well, but he's been swooped, I think, by Marcus Leth of Denmark. And as they head into the final corner, it's Jolly, Leth, Davis, Radaielli's in there in four for the Italian squad. He's going to bring it to the line. He's going to go through to the semi-final. So it's Jolly, Leth, Davis, Radaielli going through. Kogan out in five. But a great, great lap from the Australian. He's absolutely flying. Our cameras were focused on him very early on. Let's get to see uh, fist pump. Took the uh, short seat uh, pin down at the back there of his uh, trousers. So you get the uh, warm down pin, the uh, running around seat pin, the slightly longer one. But he was so strong out from the start. Now in round number one, changing position between the start ramp and the first turn was quite instrumental in a lot of races. But Jolly didn't need to do that. He would just went absolutely throughout the gate better maybe on day two yeah absolutely if he's not going to make moves in turns if he's out in front he can pick his lines it's going to be great for him he was followed in by marcus left harrison davis in there his coach adam curry will be watching back in australia and be excited to see how his ride is progressing so wherever you are in the world thank you for joining us here in rotorua for round number two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. Our racing kicking off in coverage with the men's quarterfinals. We are going on to our next of our heats. And uh, Kip Stalfasher, a man who had a bad day at the office in round one. Can he have a better day in round number two? Okay, riders, 
here, Riders. Random start. Rider is ready. Watch the gate. So Renato da Silva of Portugal on the outside, nowhere else, and of Australia on the inside, but the first rider to show his Kip Stalfasher of uh, Switzerland leading it into the turn. He's got to Curtis Cray of Canada in there in two, Elton's worked his way into three. That looks like Rinki Ugamaru's in there in four, but he's under pressure from Federico Capello as they go down that second straight. Capello just getting it slightly wrong, but still manages to get under the burn jump, makes his move, dives underneath, works his way from fourth to second. So Stalfasher, the winner of round number six in Sarion's in 2023, he's leading it out of the turn, Elton in there in two Capello's in there in three, Curtis Cray in four, looks like Ugamar's going to be the unlucky guy in five, Stalfasher takes it, Elton Capello, Cray going through, Ugamar in five, Renato da Silva in six, great lap though from the rider from Switzerland. And some amazing moves being made there, both by Capello and Ugamar, both taking that line, going wide in, coming out tight, maybe not carrying as much speed, but then had it almost done back. So he's got to feel so for Curtis Craig. Great start for him for Canada, coming round in second wheel. But it was as we got further down, we started to see those moves being made. Capello again coming strong towards the end of the race. Yeah, he dived underneath. He went from fourth to second, and uh, Ugamar followed him at that point, and Noah Elton was back there in four, but they got shuffled around as they came to that final straight. There was no doubt about the winner. Stalfasher took it. Curtis Craig coming through in that fourth spot. He'll be delighted with that. It's a bit sweet, isn't it? He comes in in fourth spot, doesn't get the pick of the uh, gate when he moves up, but he does go through. But he was so quick from that start. We'll see if he can uh, stitch that full lap together from start to finish. Will he be the one to watch when we move in to our semi-finals? So three down and one more to go in the men's under-23 as our women elite and our men elite are waiting for their turn to take it to the hill for our quarter-finals here in Rotorua. The crowd are watching on, people making their way down to the track from all around the world. And thank you very much for joining us. Rich Eames and myself, Matt Payne, here. And looking forward to this all day and night long because we've been on the go it feels like about 48 hours our riders well they hopefully have got uh, plenty of rest in between will they be able to keep this uh, working all the way to the end let's see if uh, the uh, Greenough brothers are able to nail this two brothers one heat will they both go through four riders through to the next round Last of the quarterfinals for the men under 23 and this one contains Jesse Asmus of Australia who's on the inside in gate number one. He'll be looking for a better round two than uh, he had in round number one. He's back there in about fourth at the minute under a little bit of pressure but the Australian holding it on but it's green off and uh, his brother heading down the straight towards turn number two. And that looks like Luis Orusson of France who's in there in three. Jesse Asmus looking good in four but it's Benny Green off leading Jack now towards that final corner. The Greenoff brothers in and out we go. Russo looking very good in that third spot. Jack Greenoff bringing it to the strike under pressure from Bennett. They're both going to go through one and two. A great result for the home crowd here in Rotorua. Luis on Russo in three. Jesse Asmus going through in four. Another quick round here. 37.821. The time shown on my screens for our winning ride there as it came down from the uh, straight off the ramp. You could just see the Great Up Brothers that really knew what they wanted to do and what they wanted to achieve. Working their way across, you can just see uh, Bennett there with the uh, yellow gloves on. He's the uh, rider on the front. Jack comes up on his well behind. Everybody's trailing in their wake here today. Well, genetics definitely uh, playing a part in their success because they are absolutely fine. This track really suits them, and certain tracks suit certain riders, don't they? Uh, yeah, they certainly do, and, uh, you know, the riders, uh, you know, getting to grips with this brand-new uh, venue on the World Cup circuit, but Benny Greenoff, Jack Greenoff, Lewis on Russo, and Jesse Asmus confirmed as going through in the last of the quarterfinals for the men under 23, and we'll be moving on very shortly to win the elite. So our women elite will be following on, then it will be our men's elite, a little bit of sucking up the oxygen, a little bit of a yawn there. Always a key sign that people are trying to need a little bit more oxygen on board. Can be a sign of nerves. 
Hopefully it's not a sign of a lack of sleep, but there were some disturbed nights last night for some of the riders. Uh, we've uh, seen that. But, uh, hopefully they've all recovered from that, those involved in... Uh, in uh, the uh, uh, fire alarm that uh, they, were, they were subjected to. I think we've all been uh, in that place when we've been out and racing out and around the uh, globe. Uh, time for our women elite to take to the start heat number one in the women's elite. And this is a packed field. Yep, Axel Etienne of France lining up there, fully focused behind those uh, dark goggles. And uh, the winner of round number one, she's got the red series leaders number plate on that 77. It's Sakaki Barra of Australia. First of the quarterfinals, four women elite ready to go. Daughter Bala of uh, Denmark on the outside, Van Veenstra. Made the main event in round number one. They're in the middle. Here, the random start. Riders ready. Watch the gate. So Kakibara and Etienne on the inside and uh, as they head towards turn number one it does look like Saya Sakakibara picking up where she left off in round number one Manon Vistra working away in the in two and that looks like Delaney Vaughan of the USA in three so Vaughan under pressure now though from Axel Etienne all got it slightly wrong going down that second straight and she's under pressure now from Dorta Bala as they head towards turn number two it's starting to spread out a little bit all oh, elbows being thrown in the corners let's have a look as they head down towards uh, that uh, final turn it's Definitely Saya Sakakibara in there in front. Manon Vinstra going through into Delaney Vaughan in three. And it's the 971 of Manon Valentino from France who's going to pick up that fourth spot. Dortabala out in five. Charlotte Devolder in six. So Saya Sakakibara certainly looks like there's no stopping her here in round number two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. Yeah, she's has well and truly picked up where she left off at the end of last season but there was uh, a little bit of elbow action in there and uh, that was uh, coming from Axel Etienne who was fighting it out on the way down there with the daughter Bala and in the end both of them lost out and uh, it was lucky I think that uh, the rest of the riders managed to avoid it coming into this left hand turn just watch the uh, cut across there from Bala she goes across to Etienne with nowhere left to go other than to uh, ease back off the power. Yeah, absolutely. Manon Valentino was out in front at that point, so um, they were both battling for that fourth spot, and I don't think they were close enough. So here's the confirmed results from heat number one of our Women's Elite quarterfinals. Sayasa Gakibara taking top spot on her way through. Nearly half a second clear of Manon Vinstrasis. An omen of what is to come. There are lots of riders who are going to see if they can take away that top spot, though. Not least of which are world and Olympic champion in Olympic year. And we're going to be heading to uh, Paris in uh, August. Will uh, Bethany Shreva be able to retain her Olympic title? Will she be able to retain her world title when we go to Rock Hill and can she deal a blow to the host of Sao Sakakibara? Well, one rider who has promised a lot, Tessa Martinez of France lined up. She's got a good draw in here in uh, the uh, gate number three, but it's going to come down to who can get into turn number one the fastest and establish some dominance. Once again, Bethany Shriver of Great Britain is elected to go from gate number six. It's her favoured gate here at uh, the Road to Rua BMX track in New Zealand. Looks like it's working for her right now, but she's got pressure coming from Zoe Clayson. Oh, the riders nearly coming together. Payne Ragnar in there in three. Felicia Stansel in four. Lauren Reynolds in five, but it's Clayson's leading it out as they go into the second turn. Payne Ragnar's about two bite lengths behind. Where is Bethany Shriver of Great Britain in there in three? The 2022 world champion Felicia Stansel of Team USA chasing her down. Bethany's looking for another spot as they go in and out the final turn. It's Clayson's. He's riding all going to hang on from Shriver as they get to the line. Shriver's going to take that second spot, I think. Peyton riding all in three. Felicia Stansel in four. Disappointment for Tessa Martinez, who's not managed to progress further than the quarterfinals here in Rotorua.
and testimony to this, that transition, I mean, it doesn't sound much when you go from an under-23 to an elite, but this start, I mean, she was right at the back from that start. Is it just explosive power that comes with age? Is it strength? Or is it just intimidation in some ways of being in with the elites? What do you think? Yeah, you're definitely moving up into a, you know, a much faster uh, class as they go across the line by finishing and picking up that second. And, you know, you did get that extra experience and you, you can't get to that level within two races unless you're very very lucky tess has got a lot to learn but i'm sure she'll learn it quickly well we will see if she's going to be able to do that when we move on to round three in brisbane in a couple of weeks time but here our focus on the women's league quarterfinals with placing shriver right at standstill going through shriver again just uh, sitting in the mix when it comes uh, to our quarterfinals. Not always at the front from the word go. Her teammate, Cullen, well, he's all smiles at the moment. He's got, uh, he's got his work cut out, though. Yeah, he's uh, going to be on the uh, gate a little bit later on in the Men's League quarterfinals as we look at the heat three of the Women Elite Quarters. Uh, Meryl Smulders on the inside on that 22 play, but on the 11 Olympic silver medalist from Team USA, that is Elise Willoughby. She's in there in gate number three. And uh, she's certainly got company around her as we see on the two plates. Laura Smulders of the Netherlands, 27 World Cup wins to her name. She's looking for win number 28. And I wouldn't bet against it being too long before she gets that win. Okay, Riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the game. Here we go, quarterfinal number three. Oh, Emily to Lise Willoughby. Charge into the front. Laura Smulders in there as well. Meryl Smulders on the inside. Those sort of smell Smulders sisters battling behind Judy Bowles in there as well. And as they head in and out of the turn and they uh, head down the straight, Camille Murs in the mix as well. Sounds like there's been a crash because there was a big ooh from the crowd as uh, they exited that first turn. Didn't quite catch what had happened. Lexis Colby not in that shot, so she might be one of the riders who's hit the deck. But as they go in and out the final turn, Laura Smulders creeping up on the back of Elise Willoughby as they come down towards that finish line who's going to get into the stripe oh Willoughby gets it Meryl Smulders in there in two I've got a feeling it was Laura Smulders who hit the floor coming out of turn number one so a big big shock one of the podium athletes from round number one won't be going further than the quarters in round number two all action and uh, the uh, crowd here being treated to uh, the full BMX action now let's take a little bit of a look back here knowing now that it was uh, Smolders who went down in the race here it was tight behind we've seen that race between fourth and fifth place is incredibly tight yep Laura Smolders uh Going down in uh, a very unfamiliar heat there. She's one of the smoothest riders in the women elite class. It looked like she just had a little touch of elbows and that was enough to knock her off, uh, off her balance. And down she went. Lexis Colby coming across in five. So a disappointment for Laura Smulders here in round number two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. She'll have to bring it back in Brisbane in round number three. So a very unfamiliar position for Laura Smulders with a did not finish at the end of heat number three. Will be uh, Meryl Smulders, uh, Matt and Bout the runners going in through Lexis Colby just outside that, uh, but able to avoid uh, Laura Smulders down on the deck. As we take a look around from the BMX so track area, you can see some amazing scenery just on the edge of the track. You can ride straight out from the venue into the hills and uh, definitely a kept place where I think uh, not only has British and I got it on our bucket list, I think pretty much everybody who isn't down there at the moment has it on their bucket list as well. So three heats complete in our women's elite uh, and uh, you can see a small that's just being helped off there now that is very characteristic of a collarbone uh, uh, clench of the right arm there isn't it when you hold your arm like that trying to stop some movement could be a uh, shoulder could be a wrist our riders so they are incredibly tough and the the fact that they train so hard 
actually means that when you hit the floor, you're less likely to actually bend and break something. So if anybody's going to come out of it and be able to come back quick, it is our elite athletes, isn't it? Because they have the strength, they have that power from years and years of racing. Yeah, certainly hope that Laura Smulders is okay and can make it back for round number three in Brisbane. As we look at the start list for round four, Mariana Pajon, Gabriella Bolle, Nadine Eberhard in this one, Molly Simpson, Talia Burford, and the 2022 under 23 women world champion, Mailing Kelstrup of Denmark. Still to make her mark in the women elite class, will round number two be the time that she gets it done? And when we saw them racing last round, uh, Payon not as good as we maybe had hoped, as she would have hoped. We thought she was going to be right in that mix, but it wasn't to be. No, she's been right at the top of the class for so long now as uh, Mariana Pajon. She knows what she needs to do to get it done, and it's just a case of if it'll happen here today. So we can see her lined up here, uh, known as the Queen Bee of BMX. So she will be looking to take this out. She has the inside line in gate the number one. And uh, this uh, is uh, as often as not about who gets the kick and can dominate coming into that first turn. Tally Burford right out on the right hand side at the moment. And for Switzerland, can she make it? Two riders from Switzerland in this last quarter final in Women Elite, both coached by David Graff. Has he given them the tools to get towards that first turn first? They're very, very close, but it looks like Merlin Kelstrup, who's picked up the lead in and out of turn number one. But the Swiss riders ganging up behind her. Where is uh, Mariana Pajon, the double Olympic champion? She's back there in four of the minute under pressure, though, from Molly Simpson as they go into that second turn. Gabriella Bolle, the other Colombian, is back there in six, and she's making her move up into five. Can Pajon hold her off in that final? Final corner. Oh, she's diving underneath. The elbows are flying. Gabriella Bolle hits the deck. It's going to be a sprint to the line between Molly Simpson and Mariana Pajon. Simpson gets that final qualifying position. Mariana Pajon just in the wrong position as they came out of that final turn. The disappointment is palpable. And it was no go for the two Colombians. Well, that is not the day the Colombian fans would have wanted. And uh, Pajon, after... Uh, not only uh, realising that she's not going through and the disappointment of that registering, she was looking back very quickly there for her countrywoman there. So uh, Bolle uh, coming uh, down. She put a fantastic dive in. I thought they were both going to come up and through there. They looked like they just got that absolutely spot on, but it wasn't to be. No, it certainly wasn't. Uh, and, uh, out from Merlin Kelstrup had, had gone and, uh, you know, Gabriella Bolle, she went for the move. The foot came out of the pedal. That was enough to pitch her over the handlebars. Much to the disappointment of the crowd. And uh, Merlin Kelstrup was taking the win at that point and it had just done enough to let Molly Simpson pick off Mariana Pajon down that final straight and the Olympic double gold medalist out of the quarterfinal stage in Rotorua. And... Uh, is this the year that you would want that to happen as a former Olympic champion? The answer to that has got to be no. She would have wanted to start this season coming back and being right in the mix. And does this mean really she needs to do, a, like we were talking earlier, a complete reset here? Because you'd normally do that between seasons and then really be building coming in. She's got limited time. Two weeks' time, we're on to round number three. She's got to get herself turned around really quickly to get into that two weeks of training, but she's away from home for those two weeks. Yeah, I think the great thing about Mariana is she's been doing this for so long. She knows how to reset herself in short order. She'll put that disappointment behind her. She's a professional athlete, and she'll be ready to go in round number three. So the riders lined up all ready to go for our next race here today. It's time to see if we are going to get our men's elite riders through in one piece and without too many people skittling it down the deck as they come through. Hopefully they're all going to make it and we're going to see them sprinting in to the finish. The riders lined up in the men's elite. It is going to be an interesting race here with one of your favourite riders, as you call him, the little magician. Yes, Carlos Ramirez, Olympic bronze medalist in the in gate number four. And uh, also from the South American contingent, we've got Diego Arboleda, who's already picked up a World Cup win in Glasgow, and he'll be looking to add to his total here. Riders ready, watch the gate. 
Most of the quarterfinals for the men elite heading down towards turn number one. Let's have a quick look who's going to lead it into that first turn. Cedric Booty of Switzerland picking up the whole shot. Looks like Gonzalo Molina's in there in two. He's a World Cup specialist, especially when he's racing in Santiago del Estero. But he's brought his speed to Rotorua in New Zealand. Arbolader's in there in three. The little magician going through in four. Magnus Dyer of Denmark's in there in five. Where is Dave van der Berg? He's in there in six for the Netherlands. In and out the final. Final corner, Booty, Molina, uh, Arboleda, Ramirez. That's your one, two, three, and four. Dyer's making a last gasp dive. It's not enough. Vandenberg's out in six. Cedric Booty of Switzerland, 37.050. A really fast lap for the Swiss rider. He was absolutely motoring there as he came in through the finish, but uh, almost saw Arboleda get caught out uh, there as they came through by uh, Dyer on the finish. But that work that was done early on by Booty really did pay off, didn't he? I mean, he, he looked just quicker all the way through. Very comfortable over here. Yeah, and uh, Molina was under all kinds of pressure as well from uh, the two Colombians behind him, but he did enough to hold them off. Magnus Dyer was uh, desperately trying to get himself into a top four. Arboleda looked the wrong way, and I think if Dyer had been a little bit closer, it could have been a different story at the finish line. Yeah, that's not what you want on camera, being caught looking in the wrong direction at the wrong time, but Booty... He didn't need to look anywhere. They were in his rear view mirror. Cedric Booty goes through Newton C by five and a half, a point five of, uh, of a second, five point five point five five of a second going through. That is a good gap. Yeah, definitely. He, it good showed gap. on the screens there, and he's setting his marker out. He's he's been looking good. The Swiss squad have come to Rotorua on form here. The round one was good. Great results. Round two's looking like it could go the same way. Yeah, we'll wait and see. There's plenty of racing before that as we look at the hometown favourite, the under-23 World Cup Series champion from 2023. That is Rico Beerman. He's looking to be the first New Zealand rider to win a World Cup since Mark Willers in Papandal in 2011. And uh, let's see if round two in Rotorua is going to be the day for him. in his door at Great Britain in gate number four. Here random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. <laughs> Two of the quarterfinals underway, and look at Cameron Larson of Team USA he heading towards turn number one. I've got a feeling Quillen's door has gone down, and Bodie Turner of Australia. So those two riders, the day is done. Neat Kimmon, though, quietly going about his business from gate number eight. He's in there in the lead. Rico Beerman going through in two. That looks like uh, Juan Esteban Naranjo Murillo, who's in there in that third position. And. Uh, Cameron Larson's been shuffled back into that fifth spot. He's got to get past Jeremy Renkerell, I think, if he wants to make it through to the next round. Kimmon in control. Beerman in there in two. Murillo in three. Jeremy Renkerell in four. Cameron Larson seventh in round number one, but out in the quarterfinals in round number two. And let's just hope that Quillen Isidore and Bodie Turner are okay after that fall. So it did look a, a pretty high speed uh, slide down the deck. It looks like at least one of our riders uh, just uh, rolling his way around here. That's going to be Hugo uh, Marslek uh, going to make his way in towards the line. And uh, he uh, looks like he's OK. And that just all went wrong on the landing. Yeah, didn't quite catch what happened. Oh, Quillen and uh, Bodie both touching. Bodie going straight over the bars. Certainly a big impact. Let's hope he's OK. Meanwhile, Nick Kimmon had just gone about his business from gate eight. Rico Beerman was in there in two. Jeremy Renkerell having a better day already in round number two than he had in round number one. And Cameron Larson wondering what it might have been coming across in that fifth place. So you can see the results on your screen there. Nick Kimmon taking away the win, 37.599. And uh, it was a good ride by him, showing that uh, when he's on form, he comes from the outside in. He is in with a shout, and this door comes over the line a few rips to the kit after that slide down 
on the, the uh, track here. The track will be inspected and checked just to make sure it's all okay. But the track here has been in tip top condition all the way through round number one and so far into round number two. The team here doing an amazing job. I've got to say a massive thank you to everybody behind the scenes who keeps the tracks in great condition. Hey, it's, they're, they're the unsung workers, aren't they? Really, they're there. You know, they are literally keeping us all together. And their preparation pays off in the racing, and we're seeing that. Yeah, the, uh, the volunteers here at uh, Rotorua BMX Club, they've done a superb job, as you say, Matt, in making sure this track's ready for the uh, UCI BMX Racing World Cup, and they're all over it, in between motors, just making sure everything's as it should be. And yes, we'd like to thank them for their efforts. Yeah, big team making it happen, including our medics, who will be uh, keeping an eye on uh, Bodie Turner. And uh, if we get some news before the end of the show, we will let you know how he's doing. But uh, the riders, if in doubt, the medics are going to make sure that they're all in one place. Um, it's something that happens time and time again. If you ride on two wheels, at some point you are likely to uh, not quite stay on those two wheels, as I should know. Uh, and uh, medical teams are... Uh, absolutely invaluable so a massive massive thank you to the medics wherever they are uh, including the ones that scrape me off the floor quite regularly well <laughs> all too regularly so the grouse enjoying the racing here in rotorua i gotta say it has been full of thrills and spills and if anything today is edgier in round two than we saw in round one yeah, I think those pre-race nerves have uh, just disappeared slightly from round number one. And uh, round two, it's just everybody's that bit more focused. They generate that bit more power. There's more intensity and it leads to more, you know, exciting racing. And with that comes tumbles and falls and spills and that kind of thing, as we've just seen. But to what it gives us is more speed, more excitement, more drama for the crowd here in Rotorua. And that's good for BMX all around. It certainly is, and we've got a packed season of racing, so we're into round number two here in Rotary New Zealand. We're going to move on in two weeks' time, 24th and 25th, for rounds three and fourth in Brisbane in Australia. Rounds five and six will be, six will be coming from Tulsa in USA. That's in at the end of April to round out the World Cup. It's time to get back down to our race in the Men's Elite quarterfinals, heat number three, and Isaac Kennedy... Well, he's going to get the uh, prime pick of the uh, gates here in heat number three. He's absolutely flying, but when you're up against the world champion, who is looking astounding, he's riding round one out of the gate. It was stunning. It was, it was superb. He came through in uh, fourth place in his eighth final. So Roman May has not had the best gate pick for this quarterfinal, but he's got the uh, horsepower to make it count down this first straight. But certainly he's got seven other riders to battle against, including Isaac Kennedy and Ross Cullen. I can see that number one on Roman May, who's a back as world champion. He took that in Glasgow. Ready, watch the gate. Kennedy and Cullen leave the gate in uh, one and two as they head down towards that first turn. Ross Cullen uh, bringing the power and he's going to get the whole shot into turn number one. So it's Cullen, Kennedy, Mathis Rago, Richard, uh, Renault Blanc. That's you one, two, three, and four at the minute. It looks like Matteo Carmona Garcia has worked his way into a top three position now. He's there in that third spot as they go in and out the turn. Mathis Rago, Richard under pressure now from Renault Blanc as they go through the third straight rhythm section. Coming to the final corner, it's Cullen, Kennedy, Carmona. Carmona Garcia, Mathis Rago, Richard, that's your one, two, three, and four. Has Renault Blanc got anything for him as he comes to the line? Cullen taking the win in the quarterfinal. Kennedy, Carmona Garcia, Rago, Richard, that's your top four. Renault Blanc out in five, but the big shock, Roman Mayu, the world champion, going out at the quarterfinal stage. You said as he started that, and we were watching earlier on, that he hadn't gone through where we would expect and he's now out i mean it's, it's i'm almost speechless to see the world champion he came off this gate late got his brakes on yeah, it's, uh, you know, when you're in the middle of the pack, it's a little bit more difficult than being on the inside or the outside. You've got riders on either side. And uh, at this level, you've just got to be so precise with your gate. And if you don't get what you need coming out of the, you're going to get cut off pretty quick. And that's what happened to Roman Mayu. Meanwhile, Ross Cullen of Great Britain 
starting to show the potential. He's going to go through with a win, but Roman Mayu, he's going to have to, uh, you know, regroup, come back in Brisbane for round number three, and I'm sure it won't be long before we see him on the podium again. So you'll confirm results with Colin Kennedy, uh, Carmona Garcia, Rago Richard. The four riders going on to our semi-final competition. Blanc, Ogeva, Shara and Mayu out of competition. Well, we have one more hit to go. And the man who maybe could profit most from the absence of Roman Mayu is the man who took second place in the round number one, Yoris Dode. Is this now the door been opened? Well, there's no such thing as an invitation in BMX, but I think Yoris Dode has got the closest thing to one than he'll ever get. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he can make it pay as we go through to the finals. Local favourite Michael Byers on the outside in lane at number eight, and that is Jeremy Smith of Team USA. Okay, Ryder, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. As the riders head down the hill here in Rotorua, Michael Bias of New Zealand got it all wrong and he's back there in eight, so he's going to have to pull out the ride of a lifetime if he's going to make his way in. He's going high low in that first turn, he's going to try and work his way through. Yoris Dode out in front of the Pilards in there as well. Jeremy Smith in third, who's got that full spot at the moment as they go in and out of turn number two as Bias worked his way in. He has, he's gone from eighth to fourth, superb riding from the New Zealand rider. Dode in control, Bias is looking for more, fourth to third to second under pressure now as he give himself a little bit too much to do. Is he going to hold it to the line? Bias and Pilar, a photo finish. Jeremy Smith, Michael Bias was shopping for more as they came into that final corner. He was looking to thread the needle. Oh, what action. As Eddie Clerte picks himself up in that final turn. And Matteo Colsone going out in six as well. There's so much to unpack there. A great, great quarterfinal lap. Let's deal with a couple of really quick things. Great run by Yoris Dode. Pretty much in trouble by what's going on behind him. The move by Bias. I mean, he come from the very back. He didn't even get a good start. He was seconds behind on the way down there. And yet he came in. But did he want too much? Did he try and take too much? He was potentially going to be in there. I mean, he was sitting pretty in what was sort of a third, fourth place spot. And then it all just unraveled. Yeah, he saw the gap. He went for it. You can't blame him for that one. It's uh, certainly giving the crowd what they came for. There was a little nudge from Jeremy Smith. That took out Eddie Clerte at the same time. Meanwhile, Simba Dan and was uh, getting in there as well. So we'll have to wait and see what the confirmed result is. And one rider, Matteo Colsone, I mean, he's a rider who's moved up. He's one of those riders who come from under 23. He's moved up into the elite ranks. Two rounds in, we've not seen him move up all the way through into the semis, into the finals but he's still showing he's got the paces but he's not far away is he no he definitely isn't and uh, looking at the final uh, result uh, michael bias he was going for it it didn't quite work out in his favor and there was a very small gap between him and pilard simbadana and going through in that second spot he'll be delighted with that so that means our men's elite quarterfinals are complete here in Rotary in round number two. So here at round number two in Rotary, it's time to move on to our semi-finals. We're going to kick off with our men's under-23 semi-finals. And this is where we're going to see who makes that selection. Four riders moving through to the final. Four riders. It'll be the end of competition. And this could be a very tricky heat to come through here in heat. And winning the first of our semi-finals. Rich. They're very evenly matched in a lot of ways, the riders that we've got up here in heat number one. Yeah, they very much are. Jordan Callum of Australia in the in gate number eight. On the 502, gate seven, uh, he's already been in the world championship final. That's Federico Capello. And on the 518 out of Australia, it's Harrison Davis. Next to him on the 522, representing Canada, it's Curtis Cray. Gate four on the five, two, four. Fast out of France. It's Louis Rousseau. 
on the 535 out of Australia. He's put some sparkling performances in already here in Rotorua. It's Joshua Jolly. The 508 took a World Cup win in Sarriens, France in 2023. Kip Stauffascher of Switzerland. The on the inside for Australia. Gate number one on the 5 template. It's Oliver Moran. So the first of the semi-finals for the men under 23. Round two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup here in Rotorua, New Zealand. Let's see who's going to make the final. Here are random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. Oh, there was a twitch there from Kip Stalfasher on that gate and he might have just pushed him back that little bit. He's going to have to work his way through the pack. Oliver Moran and Joshua Jolly looking like they're going to go one and two into the corner. Capello's doing his trademark swoops in that turn. Luis on Russo in there in four. Stalfasher in five. Moran and Jolly, it's an Australian one-two at the moment. Here comes Federico Capello working his way up into that second spot. Luis on Russo's made a mistake. He's been shuffled back now and it looks like uh, going into that final Final corner, it's going to be Moran, Capello and uh, Joshua Jolly, that's going to be your one, two, three. Who's going to pick up that four spot as they get across the line? It was the 5-3-2, I think. Jordan Callum of Australia going through, Luis on Russo. He'll be bitterly disappointed with the mistake he made as he came out of turn number two. Well, great ride at there. Coming through to uh, take top spot, uh, Oliver Moran goes uh, through. Right, who took fourth in round number one of the World Cup. And this start by Stout I mean, that was a disaster in itself. But then Capello's moves up here. As you say, he's trademark diving, swooping through. You thought, OK, he's into three, but this jumped through. Flew through and then Jolly just went backwards. Yeah, I uh, was looking at Luis on Russo. He made a little mistake coming out of that second turn, and that's what pushed him back and allowed uh, Jordan Callum to go through. Harrison Davis just shaking his head, knows he should have done better in that one, and Kip Stalfasher. Well, there'll be an inquest uh, in the Swiss tent, but he'll be back for round number three. And once you lose momentum, and that was very evident there with uh, Luis on Russo, he got uh, checked, he couldn't take the momentum around here, he had to dive up and down. He lost it, he put him into fifth place, and Moran Capello, Jolly and Callum going through. Momentum is key, lose it, it's so difficult, it's just too short to pick up the pace, get back in there. If that happens, our first four qualifiers are for the men's under 23 finals are through from the semi-finals, who will be joining them? In the final, well, it will be the four riders out of our next set of riders away on the top of the gate. That the riders, they know they're going to be called up but pretty quick here today because the racing comes thick and fast. There's no hanging around and waiting. You haven't got time to go off and go grab something off the barbie and come back again, that's for sure. Yep, Marco Radielli in the in gate number eight with James Cutter Williams of Team USA lined up in gate seven. Gate six on the 516 representing Denmark, it's Marcus Leth. Gate five on the 512 out of France, it's uh, Gregoire Kellier. Gate four from Australia made the podium in round number one, it is Noah Elton of Australia. On the 511, local rider on that uh, black bike, the Mabo, it's uh, Jack Greenoff. The 503, gate number two, it's Jesse Asmus of Australia. And on the 505, gate number one, representing New Zealand, Benny Greenoff. So the top three riders from the round number one finals, they're here in this semi-final. Who will go through? Will all three make it? Time to find out. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. Semi-final number two is go. Let's watch the action unfold as they come down the hill. Oh, Kellier of France has hit the deck over that first jump. So his semi-final is over. It looks like Benny Greenoff leading it out. Jesse Asmus in there in two. That looks like Marcus Left going through in three. Jack Greenoff's in there in four. Noah Elton battling away with James Cutter-Williams. Cutter-Williams going uh, far too far over that jump. Can't get over the burn jump. Moves being made in the corner. Greenoff's trying to get up on left. Here comes Noah Elton trying to snake his way down the inside. Is he going to be able to make the move in the final corner?
corner. No, can't make it stick. Benny Greenoff in one. Jesse Asmus in there in two. Marcus left in three. Jack Greenoff's going to make his way in in four. And Noah Elton of Australia. Podium in round one. Fifth place in the semi in round number two. He'll be disappointed with that. Especially after coming off that great, great round number one. But the Greenoffs do it yet again. And this time around, an absolute flyer from Bennett Greenoff. Uh, just on the inside. As he came in over, it was all carnage behind him. And we saw that flip on that landing. I'm sure uh, we'll see him making his way rolling down our Frenchman. Who, uh, Kelly A. But a little bit further down the uh, track. Bennett Greenoff really opened up the uh, ground there. Two pairs, but then Elton, he almost made it. He just couldn't take the speed off the straight onto that final corner. Yeah, he was trying to nip down the inside of Jack Greenoff as he came down that third straight. Left himself uh, a little bit too much to do. Couldn't carry his momentum through that final turn. And that's what cost him. He went out in five. So Jesse Asmus confirmed as taking the win. Bennett Greenoff in two. Marcus Leth in three. Jack Greenoff in four. They'll be going through to the men under 23 final here at the second round of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. So our men's under 23 semi finals complete. We know our four riders moving in to the finals. We're going to be moving on to our women's elite semi finals here in Rotorua. And you can see. Just a little bit dazed after coming up and over the top. The medical team's looking after our riders, and he'll be in the best of hands here in Rotorua. And great to see him up and walking after that tumble on the very first jump. So the crowds just at the side of the jump part. They're looking down on the grandstands. They're going to get the Women's Elite semi-finals. The first of our heats is a cracker the second one is absolutely insane the riders that we have here today can anybody touch Sayas Kakibara Rich well certainly in the form that she's in some people might say no but this is BMX racing and anything can happen as we've seen at any given moment but certainly the form she's in kind of suggests that she's going to be there or thereabouts in the final but she's got to get through this semi first because she's got Elise Willoughby who's going to be right there with her as well and uh, Delaney Vaughan's going to be lining up in gate number two and you can't count out Judy Bow or uh, Peyton Ridenor either so uh, a very very stacked first semi-final here for a women elite as Bethany Shriver gives a wave to the camera and as we move to the top of the hill the 202 out in gate number eight it's Talia Burford of Switzerland gate seven on the 388 from the Netherlands she's had a World Cup win on her home track of Papendal it's Judy Bow on the 44 representing Canada it's Molly Simpson the 175 out of Denmark looking to make her mark it's uh, Malin Kelstrop. On the 15, the former number of her coach, Ariel Martin, it's uh, Peyton Bride North. On the 11 plate for Team USA Olympic silver medalist, Elise Willoughby. The 31 also for Team USA, Delaney Vaughan. And on the inside, the series leader with the red number plate from Australia, the winner of round number one, it's Saya Sakakibara. So the crowd are ready, our runners are ready. Time to pick your favourite, time to see who will go through. Four riders going through to the final. Riders ready, watch the gate. The excitement continues here in Road to Ruin, New Zealand with the Women Elite semi final. Saya Sakakibara is getting out in front and she's going to lead it into turn number one. Team USA ganging up behind her. Delaney Vaughan in there in two. Elise Willoughby in three. Who's got that full spot right now? Looks like Molly Simpson who's trying to put daylight between herself and Talia Burford. Sakaki Barra though, four bike lengths clear now over Elise Willoughby. She's out in front and absolutely charging. Who's got that four spot? Looks like Burford's got it. Here comes mainly Kelstrup and Molly Simpson. It's going to be a battle down this final straight. And uh, Kelstrup's getting close. Is she going to do enough? She shakes the head. She knows she's not got it. Delaney Vaughan taking that four spot. Burford with a great ride in three. But there was no doubt on the winner in that semi final. It's Saya Sakaki Barra of Australia. The green and gold were well clear at the front of the race there. Her winning time, 36.738.
And uh, that, I think, the fastest lap time of the day in the women's elite competition. Looking forward to seeing what happens when we come to the end of the day. Will we see the new lap record here today? We will have to find out a little bit later on. Great racing, though, by Skakibara and a good recovery by uh, Peyton Ryder. Foot came out on the very first straight down the grass, got back on, but not able to charge coming in to the finish. She does finish, though, just uh, behind Judy Bauer, who won't be making the final this time round after making the final in round number one. So on to round number two, the second of our semi-finals. This is for the last four spots in the finals. They're going to be joining Sakaki of Ibarra. We've got Willoughby, Burford and Vaughan. Time for me to grab a coffee, Rich. Of these riders who have gone out, Judy Bow surely the most disappointed. Yeah, I'm sure it's disappointment for anybody who goes out in the semi-final stage in a World Cup. You're so close yet so far away. But we're moving on to semi-final two and in gate eight for the Swiss team, it's Nadine Eberhardt. Gate seven on the 23, the 2022 Women Elite World Champion, it's Felicia Stansel of the USA. Gate six, there's a theme with uh, Bethany Shriver's gate picks uh, here in Rotorua. She's gone there again and she's been lucky to make it count. Next to her, gate number five on the 971 out of France. It's France, it's Manon Valentino. Gate four on the 65, the European champion in the women elite class. It's Zoe Clayson's of Switzerland. Gate three on the treble seven out of France. It's Camille Mer. Gate two on the 22, the Olympic bronze medalist from the Netherlands. It's Meryl Smulders. Right there on the inside, made that World Championship final in Glasgow in 2023. From the Netherlands, it's Martin Veenstra. Semi-final two of the women elite here, about to go. So the riders are clipped in and ready. Poised to make their way down the straight. Who is going to come away in the top four? Okay, riders. Some great riders already just getting to the semi-finals by Random our riders. Ready, watch the gate. Here we go, Bethany Shriver selected gate six again. Is it gonna pay for her? She goes down towards turn number one. She's right there with Meryl Smulders and Zoe Clayson's as they go into the corner. Smulders gets the whole shot. Shriver in there in two, Clayson's in three, Manon Vistra in four, Felicia Stansel in five. But it's the Dutch rider and the Olympic champion who are battling into that second turn. Shriver's gonna go high low and try and make a move in that final corner. She's lining it up now, but uh, Smulders just shutting the door and just keeping Bethany Shriver behind her. They're going to drag race down the final straight. Manon Vistra is looking good in three. Who's going to get that four? Will it be Clayson's? Will it be Stansel? Looks like Stansel's going to get it at the strike. Felicia Stansel going through in four. Zoe Clayson's in five. Meryl Smulders, a picture-perfect lap from the Dutch rider. And Bethany Shriver safe in two. Very interesting race there. Lots in that, Rich. Uh, we saw Bethany Shriver not necessarily getting as great a start. She was having to fight all the way through that. We watched from the start here the world champion absolutely powering down the straight ahead of Valentino, who's already got herself into a much better position than round one where she finished 26. But Shriver there then had places in pursuit. She was right on her heels. She knew she couldn't relax, but Smolders was the rider who really did take it to her. Did Beth run out of steam here yeah. as she came into the finish? Yeah, I did notice that Beth did clip that first jump. It might have just robbed her of the momentum that she needed to take that whole shot, but she was safe in that second spot. Felicia Stanzel came through in four. She crept away through from fifth, and Manon Veenstra makes a second main event here in Rotorua, New Zealand. So Manon Veenstra coming through, taking a, a good spot, going up into the finals. And a number of the riders who didn't make it through will be pleased. Manon Valentino has just said uh, earlier on, 26th in round number one. She's going to be in a better position this time round, having made it into the semi-finals. But small street of Veenstra and Stansel, your riders are going through into the women's elite finals, which leaves us one more set of semi-finals to go. It's our men's elite semi-finals that will be coming up next. 
nice and it is going to be another storming set of races here in Rotorua. Don't forget, please do make sure that uh, you give us the uh, racing a follow on uh, Facebook, on Instagram. It is UCI BMX Racing. It's UCI underscore BMX underscore racing on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And you can always catch up with Rich. He's our BMX commentator and myself, Matt Payne, at Matt Fixer Payne. Right, moving on to uh, semi-final number one for the men elite in gate number eight. On that 3-1-3, it's Nick Kimmon of the Netherlands. Gate seven on the five, I've just announced that he's going to be a father for the first time. It's Jeremy Rencarell, congratulations to him. Gate number six for Team USA, it is Jeremy Smith. Gate five on the two plate came so close to taking a win in Glasgow at the World Championships. It's Arthur Pilard. 207 in the semi final, looking nice and relaxed and ready to go. That is Simba Dan and next to him, gate number three on the template. The green and gold of Australia, just back from injury, and he's already making his presence felt. It's Isaac Kennedy on the 202 in gate number two out of Argentina. It's Gonzalo Molina. On the inside, the six-time USA BMX Pro Champion, two-time world champion as well, it's Yoris Dode. So time for the Reddit riders to prep themselves and ready. Simba Donard, 49th in round number one, already in a better position. Can he make this count? Can he get himself into the final? Riders ready, watch the gate. The gate drops, I'm looking at Kim and I'm looking at Kennedy, I'm looking at Dode on the inside. The elbows have already started flying, Molina and Kennedy came together over that first jump. It's going to be tight into the turn, it's Dode and Kim and going one and two. Oh, Isaac Kennedy's unclipped in the corner, that's pushed him right back to eighth. Dode and Kim and still out in front, that's Molina in there in three and it looks like Jeremy Smith of the USA is in there in four. But he's under pressure now, Ren Carell's worked his way in and Simba Darnan's not done either into the final corner. Corner, Dode, Kimmon, Molina, one, two, and three. Who's going to pick up the four? It looks like Ren Carell's going to get it. Ren Carell at the strike from Don and Jeremy Smith will be kicking himself. He was in a qualifying position and just got swallowed up in that second turn. What a race. Kimmon is absolutely flying and on form at the moment. I mean, is there no stopping this man? Uh, that his time down there a very very quick one as he made his way in and through not the fastest down the gate in fact this one of the slowest riders down the gate but he had at least had a clean run big problems Isaac Kennedy there as you said Rich uh, having problems with the uh, pedal but uh, as you see Dode just came around that turn he knew where he wanted to be wanted to be out of trouble but as they came down on to the straight the push came Good ride by Donard, not to be a final this time round, but showing good form this year for 2024. Yep, certainly uh, Simba Donard's beginning to pick up that speed. Uh, unfortunate to go out in fifth place in that semi-final. And there's your confirmed result, Nick Kim and Yoris Dode, Gonzalo Molina and Jeremy Rencarell confirmed as going through to the final of Men Elite here in round number two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup in Rotorua, New Zealand. So the first of the semi-finals done. First four riders making their way in to the finals. Four riders out of action now as we move on to the second of our semi-finals. Yep, more power on top of that gate and in gate eight for Colombia. It's Juan Esteban Naranjo Murillo. Our Colombian fans definitely getting involved here. In Rotorua, gate number seven on the 741. Already a World Cup winner inside Diego Arboleda. Gate six on the 61 out of France. Lots of speed, lots of skill. And uh, it's Mathis Rago Richard. Gate five on the 278. Olympic bronze medal. The little magician. And he can make it happen at any given moment. It's Carlos Ramirez. Gate four on the 248. Listen to the crowd go wild for Mr. Rico Pierman.
Gate three, the third Colombian in this semi-final on the 70 plate. It's Mateo Carmona Garcia. Gate number two, out of Great Britain on that six plate. It's Ross Cullen. And gate number one, on the inside, in the red and white of Switzerland, it's Cedric Booty. Semi-final number two, round number two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup Men Elite. We are ready to go. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. Cullen in gate two, our leader in gate number eight, and they fly down the hill towards turn number one. Ross Cullen of Great Britain is going to pick up the whole shot. Cullen, Arbolena, Booty, that's your one, two, three, Mateo Carmona Garcia, he's in there, in for, oh, Ross Cullen, he's off the track, it all went wrong down the second straight, he was looking so good, and it's all over for the man from Preston, one of the Colombians goes down, Arbolena, Mathis Rago, Richard, Cedric Booty, and uh, the other Colombians in there as well, so the Colombians are bookending the top four, Looks like Arbolade is going to get it booting into Mathis Rago Richard. Makes his first Men League World Cup final. But I'm desperate to find out what happened to Ross Cullen from hero to zero in the blink of an eye. And it all went wrong on the second straight. That was so close coming into the finish. Great ride there by Mathis Rago Richard. Man coming back from injury last season. Uh, I think it was his elbow, if I remember right, that was uh, the damage broken. Looking very, very strong now. And um, was in the right place. He didn't panic whilst all those around him were going all over the place. Now going down the straight, can't quite tell what happened there uh, to Ross Cullen. And another, it's another slide out here you could just see taking uh, to the uh, grass. I think that was uh, Ramirez that uh, hit the deck there. It has been a very tight set of racing. What's happening, Rich? Why are we seeing so many people on the floor? Well, the, you know, you've only got so much adhesion on those tyres as you go into those turns at full speed. I was desperately trying to work out what had happened to Ross Cullen. He'll be shaking his head. He'll be going, do you know what? I had it. I was there. And you can see the disappointment, the head in his hands, their goggles come off. But that's one thing about Ross Cullen. He's resilient. He'll be back in round number three. And I've got a feeling you might see Ross on the podium sooner rather than later. Carlos Ramirez just uh, rolling off track. Good to see he's okay. Yeah, our riders picking themselves back up after those slips and slides. And uh, Ramirez is the final rider in over the line, but going through into the finals. Arbolada Booty, a regular shot. And Camilo Garcia is going to be a stacked final for our men's elite competition. Some disappointed faces. There's going to be some cool heads trying to keep it together. Rico Bierman making the finals here today. He was oozing confidence at the end of 2023. He could win almost at will. Now he's up against the elite riders. He's probably finding that a bit tougher, but that is a quick run into a final. Let's face it, we're into round two and he's made the final. He's made the final, and the, the best thing is he's done it in front of the home fans. He's done it in New Zealand, his home country. You know, no matter what, I think he'll be excited to be in the final, but if he can get on that podium... The home fans will definitely get their money's worth from the tickets that they bought and they'll be willing him on. So here in Rotorua for round number two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup here in New Zealand. Uh, it is going to be a storming set of finals. It's great to have you with us wherever you are out and around the globe. Our riders, I'm sure, can't wait to get back into action. We've seen some fantastic races, some great moves being made all the way around those turns, Rich. I can't wait to see what's going to go off in the finals. And whilst we see the crowd at the moment, Rich, they're going to be contemplating what they're going to see. I'm going to set you a little task. What do you think of some riders in your head that maybe have done some serious excelling so far? Right, I'll uh, certainly come up yeah. with something. I'm not going to tell you how long you've got in this game, though. That's fine. That will keep things just ticking along nice. We've got to keep you on your toes in the studio. Yes, definitely. Don't want you getting cramp or anything. No, not at all. So, time to head over 
and let's get into our finals. So it's the UCI BMX Racing World Cup in Rotorua. It is round number two. The first of our finals of men's under 23 finals. Going to be a cracking race. Now, of our men's and women's in the under 23, Rich, who's, who do we need to watch out for? Right, just uh, taking a look as we uh, await the riders uh, heading to the top of the hill. So who has been your pick, Rich? Who, who would you go for in terms of being a rider who has excelled in the under-23, if we had to pick a rider? If we had to pick a rider in the under-23s, you can't, uh, you, you know, kind of look past the... I'll pick two, the Greenoff brothers. So they've ridden so well, they've made two finals, and uh, it's very rare you get brothers on the track at the same time, so I think they would be my pick today. OK, in the, so in terms of the under-23s, in terms of the elites, who would you be going for? Um, I mean, you look at the consistency of Yoris Dode and uh, the fact that he's at the tail end of his career in inverted commas and he's still making finals, you can't count him out. Well, let's see if those riders that Rich has picked are going to be up there. I'm sure you've got your favourites. Uh, for me, I'd say Rufus has got to be a rider who we have got to watch in this uh, final. The rider who was uh, flying in round number one. Can she repeat this? Can she make it two out of two here today in the under 23 women's final while she gets to the top of the ramp Bethy Shriver all smiles waving down for the camera will it be Stariska a rider who probably had the most disappointing under 23 racing round number one she did but she's up there in gate number eight she's got another chance to make it count as we look in gate number seven and see the familiar figure of Emily Hutt from Great Britain the 508 of Sabina Korsakova came close to winning a World Cup in Turkey in 2023 will 2024 be hers Tegan Pascal on the 505 out of Canada she's in the in gate five and in gate number four hit the podium at Santiago del Estero all enthusiasm from Isabel May of Australia the 513 in gate number three winner of round number one of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup it's Teo Rufus the 509 from Slovakia gate number two it's uh, Dominika Manikova. And on the, the inside, gate number one, Team USA. Three wins in Santiago del Estero in 2023. It's Ava Corley. The women under 23 final, round two of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. We are ready to go. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. The final is go. I've got my eye on Ava Corley on the inside. Is she going to pick up another one of those hole shots? It certainly looks like it. But she's got Isabel May of Australia right there on a back wheel. So this isn't over, not by a long chalk. That looks like Stariska in there in four. Taya Rufus of Australia, winner of round number one. She's in there in three. Corley's just keeping that gap open. But Isabel May of Australia is creeping up on the back of her as they go towards the final turn. Can she make a move? She's going to give it a good go drag racing down the final straight may and corley bringing it to the stripe corley's under pressure may's right there next to corley gets it may into taya rufus makes it two podiums from two in there in three stariska in four manny cover in five but that was so so close between corley and uh, isabel may what a race i mean what a shot from the start down that ramp, away went Ava Corley. She just looked like she did in the racing at Santiago del Estero. As you said, three wins there. She really did burst onto the scene in style in the last season. She's been there, there, but just really did show just why she's so strong. And from the start here, you can see on the left of your screens, straight line, no going sideways for Ava Corley. It's all forward momentum. Yeah, she got a great start, and Isabel May did well as well just to get across and slot in there just behind her. I honestly thought she was going to try and make a move in one of these turns because 
Isabel May is not shy when it comes to uh, having a go and trying to work her way past somebody. Taya Rufus, she's already had one win. She'll be happy with the first and the third for her time here at uh, Road to Rua. Veronica Stariska in four. But I think we've found a new star in the women under 23 category, and it's Ava Corley of Team USA. Now, subject to calculations, never ever trust my mass. Tip from the top. But I think Ava Corley, with a first and a second place, will be going into the lead of the World Cup standings at the end of uh, today as well. With that win here today, two podiums in two rounds. Also two podiums uh, for Taya Rufus, but it's a first and a third for her. And that should be enough, I think, to get her into second place in the standings. Something that we wouldn't have predicted coming into Rotorua. But here are your final confirmations. Third results, calling in one main to Rufus in three. Stariska nearly on to that podium, but not to be this time round, but a better result than she got when she was racing in round number one, where she was eighth. So do not count out Stariska at any stage. So let's have a word with our race winner. It is with the one and only Ava Corley of the United States of America. Ava, you left, picked up from where you left off last year with another incredible race and a victory here in New Zealand. Explain how difficult it is and how exciting it is to get this result here at the opening round of the World Cup. It's, it's definitely difficult. It, this isn't exactly the easiest track either, but um, I had a rough go this, this past week. I've been really struggling going into this race. And um, yeah, I just am really happy to execute the way that I wanted to today. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really happy to see some improvements, for sure. The competition in this class steps it up, and you've stepped it up once again. What do you attribute to the success you're having on so early in the season? Oh, I just, I hit the off season like no other man. Like, it was crazy even this, but yeah, just, just work hard, love what you do. Like, this is amazing. This, nothing beats this, you know what I mean? Again, congratulations on winning the World Cup here in Rotatua. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, great ride, and I'm not surprised she's happy. Taking away the win in style, pressured all the way to the line by Isabel May, but Ava Corley takes the win here. Back to her winning ways, and that smile says absolutely everything. Well, let's see our top three riders who've entertained us and have taken away our top three spots here as they have made their way to the medal. So to our flower ceremony here in Rotorua for round number two, taking away a third place to add to her win in round number one. Taya Rufus taking that third spot. Second place for Isabel May. May in second place to add to the sixth that she got in round number one. And Ava Corley, well, it was her second in round one. She's top spot this time round. Ava Corley of the United States of America ahead of the two Australians. It's going to be a cracking under 23 women's race season. And um, we have still got four more rounds of the under 23 competition to go before we go to the World Championships in Rock Hill in the United States of America. Would you want to bet against Ava Corley being fired up for that? A world's on a home nation track. Yeah, if she's going to want to win the World Championship, she's going to want to win it in Rock Hill. And uh, we've got a bit of time till we get there in May, but it'd be interesting to see if she can get it done. So let's move on to the men's under 23 final here today. Greenough and Greenough. They go down that straight like there's no tomorrow. Can they hold themselves into the line? Don't forget, uh, you've got Jack with the black gloves. You've got Bennett with the yellow gloves. They're basically the only way you can tell the two apart. Absolutely flying the way down the uh, straight. No third place from the last round in Noah Elton, who didn't make the final. And that means that there's big points up for grabs and can see a change in those standings. Yeah, we move up to the top of the gate with Jordan Callum of Australia. And uh, the 516 in gate number seven from Denmark, Marcus Leth. Gate number six on the 511 with the black gloves on. It's Jack Greenoff from New Zealand. And next to him, gate number five on the 535 makes moves in the turns and speeds down the straights. It's Joshua Jolly of Australia. 
the winner of round number one on the 505 from New Zealand. It's Bennett Green off. Gate three on the 502 from Argentina. Look out for this guy in the turns. It's Federico Capello. The 503 out of Australia. Gate number two, it's Jesse Asmus. Number one on the inside, the five one zero of Oliver Moran. So the men under 23 final is ready to go. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. <laughs> Here we go with the final, the tension is almost unbearable as they head towards that first turn. Benny Green off Marcus Leth, one and two, Oliver Moran on the inside, Jesse Asmus inside the top five at the moment as they head down that second straight, Benny Green off, is he going to make it two wins from two in front of the home crowd here in Rotorua, New Zealand? Oliver Moran in there in that second spot, Jack Green off in three but he's just been overhauled by Joshua Jolly of Australia as they go in and out of the final turn, Benny Greenoff, here comes Oliver Moran, it's going to be a drag race to the line, who's going to get it at the stripe? Benny Greenoff gets it two from two for New Zealand, Oliver Moran going through in that second spot, Josh Jolly rounds out the podium, well, what can we say, what a performance from the rider from New Zealand. Oh, he's been on such form in round one, then into round two. So quick down those so straight off from the gun. And late here, you thought he was going to be in the fight all the way to the finish. The way he rode into this, and he took that corner. But a little bit further down, Marcus Leth went for a really bad line. He went and uh, took himself basically out of contention. You thought, yep. In position here, but watching me, it has to back right off, drops into fifth place and keeps on going backwards out of contention. Bennett, though, challenged to the line here and just that final kick being able to pump those uh, jumps over the way over the top there. He really just kept that momentum driving in. Yeah, he certainly did. And uh, I had a look at Marcus Leth and he, he got the jump before the bird jump slightly wrong, lost some momentum and then he had to go higher over the berm jump and that cost him even more and that's why he went backwards in that turn. But uh, no such problems for Benny Greenoff. He's going to take his second World Cup win. Oliver Moran and Joshua Jolly rounded out the podium. Great result for Joshua Jolly. He's going to be in a third spot on our uh, flyer ceremony and on the podium. Oliver Moran takes away a second spot. Uh, he's fourth in round one second here today. Joshua Jolly also moving up from fifth in to third. But Bennett Greenough, well, there was only one place he could go after his second in round number one. It was a top spot. And that's what he claimed here in our men's under 23 final. I'm not surprised he's breathing hard as he makes his way down this straight here in to towards the interview zone. And we'll be hearing from him very shortly indeed. If he's got any oxygen left to put words together, he's been very strong. He's been looking good. He steps it up. You had thought maybe a second place was going to be good enough, but it wasn't. He wanted that win. Let's hear from our race winner. It is a Bennett Greenoff. Congratulations on a win, backing up the brotherly rivalry. Explain to us how it feels to win out here in New Zealand. Oh, it's amazing. It's pretty special. Have a home race over the season. I'm just super grateful for the opportunity. The fans have been great. So thanks everyone for coming out. It's been awesome. The competition stacked, but when you have to race against your brother, how much more special does it make it? when you're also able to beat him and have the rights of the family. Oh man, it's definitely a bit of sibling rivalry going on, but it's good, it's good. Um, no, it's always, it's always cool to brace the family and uh, very grateful to have him as a training partner and things too. And also to win here at home in front of the crowd and the fans, they were cheering so loud. What do you have to say to them? Oh, thank you so much for everyone coming out. The sport's been amazing. Oh, thanks, thanks to everyone. <laughs> 
So great to hear from Bennett uh, Green after there. And with that win, he should be taking away the series lead as we leave here from New Zealand. A fantastic ride by Bennett Green to take the win here and uh, do the same thing as Ava Coley stepping up on to the uh, top step. Well, the top three riders are about to receive their flowers. Great result for Joshua Jolly, just reward for all of his very creative line choices, and he's diving into position during the racing here in Rotorua, taking away third place. The second place going to Oliver Moran. Another great ride by him, and again improving as he went into round number two, but no mistaking your race winner. He came through. He does get the bragging rights back home in the car on the journey home. Bennett Greenough of New Zealand, the race winner here today. A full antipodean podium. It is the Oceana trio there of uh, Jolly, of Moran and Greenough who take away the top three spots. Rich, it's uh, quite ominous for anybody who is not from this neck of the woods as we move off to Brisbane. Yeah, I'm sure if you'd have said to Bennett Greenoff before the weekend, mate, you're going to win two World Cups, he would have never believed you. So he'll be uh, he'll be going to bed and dreaming of another one in Brisbane at round number three, but there's plenty of people who want to stop him. So our run is all done in the under-23. Time for our elites. So here at the UCI BMX Racing World Cup, round number two from Rotorua in New Zealand. It's our elite finals. We're going to kick off with our women's elite final. Rich, of our finalists here, apart from Masaya Sakakibara, who has impressed you the most here? I think the, uh, the rider who's impressed me the most in women elite with her consistency is Manon Veenstra. Uh, of the Netherlands. She's uh, been in both main events and she's looked really, really good. And uh, Delaney Vaughan certainly putting in some great performances as well. Oh, he hedges his bets very quickly there. <laughs> I'm not surprised though with the quality of this race, but it's a mean question to ask you at this stage. So let's get down to the racing. They're lined up, they're all ready to go. Take us through the gate, Rich. Yeah. Gate number eight, Talia Burford of Switzerland as we move across to gate number seven on the 23 play. From Team USA, it's Felicia Stansel. Once again in gate number six, she's got a game plan. She's sticking to it. It's Bethany Shriver of Great Britain. Gate 5 on the 31, certainly been impressive here in Rotorua, New Zealand for Team USA. It's Delaney Vaughan. And gate number 4, raw power coming down that 8 metre hill. It's Elise Willoughby from Team USA. Gate number 3 on the 7 plate, been super impressive. It's Manon Veenstra. Gate 2 on the 22, it's been working for her all through the races. It's Meryl Smulders. But on the inside, the series leader from Australia, the 2023 World Cup champion, Saya Sakakibara. So the Women Elite Final Round 2 of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. Will another win go to Australia? Or will it be somebody else entirely? Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. Eight of the greats have just left the gate. Women elite are go. Saya Sakakibara, Bethany Shriver battling into turn number one. Sakakibara on the inside takes the whole shot. That looks like Manon Veenstra working her way up into that third place. But there's a battle royale out front. And it's between the Australian and the Great Britain rider. Sakakibara holding on to the lead. But uh, Bethany Shriver is right there on her back wheel. Manon Veenstra going well and looking for a podium spot. Can Bethany Shriver outrage? Saya Sakakibara down the final straight. It's going to be close. Sakakibara and Shriva half a bike in it. Sakakibara, Shriva. It's going to be a photo finish. I have a sneaking suspicion it went to the Australian, but we'll have to wait for confirmation. It was very, very close. Veenstra hits the podium. Willoughby rounds out the top four. Felicia Stansel in five. I need to regain my composure after that one, Matt.
I'm not surprised. That was so, so close. A fantastic battle at the front between Sasa Kakibara and Beth Shriva. They were giving it everything to the line. There was no backing off until they went over the finish. However, behind, what a ride. Man and Feaster is in all sorts of pieces down there. But Sayas Kakibara taking the win. Subject to confirmation here from Bethany Shriver. The world champion got better as we came through. She got closer to Sakakibara, but it was a dominant ride by the rider who surely must go across to Brisbane in, in Australia as favourite. She led from the start. She got the whole shot coming in. Shriver dropped in 2-2. Two, two. They were to remain that way, but Veenstra right up the inside. That was elbow to elbow stuff there, Rich. Yeah, it was a great move from Manon Veenstra. She carved underneath everybody else in that turn, worked her way into a podium position. But the battle was out front. Saya Sakakibara and Bethany Shriver. There wasn't very much in it at all. Bethany's gone from third in round number one to second in round number two. She'll be happy with her weekend's work, but one rider who'll be absolutely ecstatic is Sayasa Kakibara. Well, that's the photo finish as it came in and uh, through. Let's have a look, at, though, at the confirmed results. They're going to be making your way up onto the screen. Here they come. So, Skakibara confirmed in one. Bethany Shriver in two. Man and Vista in three. Willoughby, Stansel, Vaughan, Smulders and Burford. While they round out the top eight here today in round number two. So the riders are making their way in and through. Sayas Kakibara ahead of Shriva. It was close on the line. Well, here we go. This is how close it was. It uh, came down to half a bite length at the finish. I wonder if uh, Sayas Kakibara back -back knew it was that close. An incredible way to open up the season. How does it feel to, cap to start the season off like this? It's hard to put into words, seriously. I knew that coming into this this season was going to be hard and because I know what I can do and it was going to be really disappointing if I just didn't live up to that standard that I kind of put myself in and but uh, yeah it was really tough racing out there I didn't do a very good start um, I hit the gate and but I, I knew that I had a really good first straight so I was able to kind of get that lead and oh, I could feel Bethany coming and I had like literally like no legs down the last straight, but oh, I was able to hold it off just that little bit more, and that's all you need. Addy Trace, you've always said you didn't really know where you stood, even though you had these incredible racing. Sit back, look at all the results, the championship. How does it feel to continue on with such incredible results at each and every one of these World Cups? Oh, it's surreal, really. Even though I've done so many World Cup wins, now it's uh, up to eight now. Those little little negative thoughts do come in to tell you that you're not good enough, you're not going to be able to do it, you're going to crash and all that kind of stuff. Those thoughts just never go away. And um, I think I'm just like after every win, it's like getting better and better um, with managing them. And I'm um, just, yeah, redirecting my thoughts in uh, focusing my own process. So, yeah, it's. I feel like every time I'm on the game, I'm just learning. I feel like I haven't sorted anything out yet. And um, yeah, every win is like almost a surprise. Well, what we've all learned is you are the consistent new queen of BMX. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Well, definitely the queen of BMX at the moment. She might feel like she's got imposter uh, syndrome going on there. I'll tell you something, she's the real deal. Absolutely nailing that. And she said she bumped the gate on the way out. How fast would she have been? Without that, is there any stop in this woman? It won't be long till we find out. Remember, it's two weeks to one next round, round number three. But here in Rotorua in New Zealand for round number two of the UCI BMX Racing in the World Cup. Our podium ride is a great ride for Manon Veenstra of the Netherlands. A fantastic third place here in approving from her sixth place in round number one. Bethany Shriver moving up and uh, taking away a second place for Great Britain.
And the rider taking away top spot, extending her lead at the top of the series standings. It's going to be Asaya Sakakibara of Australia. What is going to stop this woman? Can anybody... And the settler, can anybody kick her out of that throne? Currently the queen, and that is a very good statement because she is looking imperious. Yeah, she's certainly uh, looking very, very good at the moment, is Saya Sakakibara. It's going to take a serious effort to stop her as we go through this World Cup season, but I'm just so impressed to see Manon Veenstra on the podium. I said she was one to watch, Matt, and I wasn't wrong. Well, we're going to give you that one. When it comes to the men's elite finals that are coming up next, um, anybody in here that uh, you... I don't want to ask you to pick your, your favourite for the win because I think that's almost impossible. But I think maybe Rico Behrman here, is he the person under the most pressure? Because he's in the final, in the elite final, his first elite. So, sorry, I'm saying he's in the elite final. Richie's looking at me like I've gone uh, out to lunch here. And is this just wishful thinking in my, uh, in my head? We'll soon tell you. You can tell that we're shuffling the papers around as fast as possible. Rich, who would you think is under the most pressure here in the final of our riders? I was going to say it was going to be Rico Beerman. It's, it's me just having a minor meltdown without enough coffee and ice cream, clearly. Uh, Nick Kimmon, he's back on form, but who's got the pressure on him here now? Um, I think the rider who'll be under pressure in inverted commas is probably Yoris Dode because of his, uh, you know, his history and his record in this age group. But... Uh, you know, Nick Kimmons uh, selected gate number eight again, so he's clearly feeling confident, but I'm excited to see what the South Americans can do in this final. And as we mentioned his name, he's there in gate number eight on the 3-1-3. It is Nick Kimmon. Gate number seven from France on that five, it's Jeremy Rencarel. Gate six on the 70 plate, the first of our South American contingent, the Colombian, it's Mateo Carmona Garcia the Colombian fans going wild in the crowd. Gate six on the 202 from Argentina. Always entertaining and always tries to make it happen. It's Gonzalo Molina. Gate number four on the 61. Speed and style out of France. It's Mathis Rago Richard. Gate two on the 149 from Switzerland. Been going fast all through round number two. It's Cedric Booty. And on the 741, out of Colombia, it's Diego Abaleda. And right there on the inside, he's got the opportunity to take the series lead. It's Yoris Dode. So gate number one on your left, gate number eight on your right, Kimmon and Dode. Dode won't want a second place again, not here, not in round number two. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. Dode on the inside, Kimmon on the outside, the South Americans in the middle. There's so much drama about to unfold here in Road to Ruin, New Zealand. And it's Dode with the whole shot. Dode, Booty, Kimmon, Molina. That's your one, two, three, and four at the moment. Looks like Kimono Garcia in there in five. But Yoris Dode of France out in front. Nee Kimmons winding it up down that third straight. He's trying to catch Cedric Booty as they go towards the final corner. Ren Carell's inside the top five. Here comes Mathis Rago Richard looking for a top four. But Yoris Dode, he's going to take the win and possibly the series lead. He gets it. Cedric Booty in two. Nee Kimmons hits the podium. And it's a photo finish for fourth between Mathis Rago Richard and Gonzalo Molina. What a race, what a ride. Said he didn't want to take second place here today, boy, did he not? He made certain of that with a long, long way to go to the line. Look at the emotion. Look at what it means to him here today. A great, great ride by Yoris Dode taking the win. It's a second place for Cedric Booty. A third place for Nick Kimmon. But these riders, well, they have shown us just how much it takes giving it absolutely everything on the uh, track here today. But Dode all smiles, and uh, even with my maths, Rich, I think uh, we're pretty sure Yoris Dode with the second place in round number one 
a first place in round number two. He's got a lead at the top, and it's going to be a good one. Yep, getting the congratulations there from his coach, uh, Thomas Allier. And let's just have a quick look at this replay. He was there on the inside. He had Arbolader right there with him, and Cedric Booty was making his way across as well. And you could see Molina getting ready to line up a move in one of those turns. Nick Kimmon had come across from eight. He was on the outside and starting to wind it up down that second straight. But Dode, he was uh, just in the process of just riding his own lap, doing his own thing, and at this point I don't think anybody was going to stop him. He came in and out of the final turn, there was daylight between himself and Cedric Booty. I think Neat Kimmon will be very pleased with the podium. Molina and Mathis Rago Richard battled for that top four spot, and it was Mathis Rago Richard I think who took it. Congratulations all round at the finish line, but another win on the record for Yoris Dode. Another win for Dode, another podium for Nick Kimmon, a massive improvement over his 22nd place in round number one, which means he's not going to be challenged up at the top, but Cedric Booty, a fourth place and a second, should push him up into second place in the standings. We'll see if that's the case. A 36.564, so another quick time on the track here today. We will be seeing those times for the fastest lap in a while, but some quick racing from our rudders. Yoris Dode, though, boy, has he enjoyed uh, reveling in the fact that he has uh, taken that win. So he's on his way down. He will be in. Let's hear what he's got to say. Joris, you have turned into Mr. Sunday with another win on the second day. The consistency in the French team has been incredible. You're all battling for the Olympic spot. This win helps propel you there, but how does it feel to take another win on the World Cup Tour? Yeah, it was an amazing day, you know. Uh, they called me Mr. Sunday, so I had to, to step it up from yesterday. But uh, yeah, amazing day. I felt pretty good all weekend long. And uh, two podium for the opening of the, of the series, it's, uh, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, pretty happy. My wife told me yesterday I had to get a bang for my last 32. So here we go. I gave everything I had today. As we said, that competition is going to be fierce heading into the Olympics. How are you going to prepare yourself to be at peak, as you seem to be able to do in the last few years of your career, to be solid all season long? Yeah, I try to, you know, stay healthy and uh, keep walking. You know, I try to, uh, to get better every, every time I get on the track and uh, be motivated. And we have a big year ahead, so uh, the motivation is here. And, uh, yeah, trying to, to keep walking hard and get better every time. And can we get that same synopsis for your French friends? in your native language, please. Uh, super journée aujourd'hui, super weekend avec une deuxième place hier et une première place aujourd'hui. Uh, ouais, très bonne sensation toute la journée. Et puis uh, voilà, finir uh, le weekend avec une victoire, c'est super. Congratulations. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, merci. Ah, oh, merci. Magnifique. 100% class. Yoris Dode taking away the win. He had his skill coming out of that last turn. He knew exactly what he was doing. He's going to be enjoying receiving his flowers as he makes his way down for the flower ceremony for the men's elite here in Rotorua, the final flower ceremony in New Zealand. Taking away third place, great seat back on the podium, Nick Kimmon of the Netherlands in third place. A second place for Cedric Pusi of Switzerland, a just reward for being so quick all day long. But Joris Dode of France, he takes away top spot and it's looking good for France. They dominated at the end of the last season. They're going into the Olympic year in prime position. They've just got to hold it all the way to the Olympics at the start of August in Paris. Will they do it? Well, you'll have to join us to find out. Our riders now done and dusted on what has been a magnificent first trip here. Our men's elite standish, Joris Dode, with that lead, a nice substantial lead up at the top. It's not quite 200 points, but Booty in second place. Romain Mayu, after that win on round number one, got 500 points on getting 58 points here today in round number two. He's got his work cut out. Kim and he's right up there. Marker and Kennedy may have had rounds that they maybe wouldn't have wanted as we came into the second, but uh, Mathis Rogo looking good. In the women's elite standings, Saya Skakibara 
full marks there. The full 1,000 points. Mr. Schubert in second place. 200 points behind, but that is an ominous gap at the top of the standings. Willoughby, Feenstra, both Smulders inside the top eight with Stassel and Vaughan rounding that out. So the positions immediately behind, very close. In the men's under 23, Green up and Green up with Bennett up at the top from Jack. Now, that gap is not huge, though, given the amount of points available for the win. Moran, Jolly, Elton, Capello, Kellerman and Les show that we have got a storming season in the men's under 23. And of course, it is going to be an absolute cracker when we come in to Brisbane on the 24th of February because our women's under 23, well, that is as close as they come. We've got Ava Corley, we've got Taylor Rufus, Isabel May, we've got a storming into form, to risk Emily Hutt is consistent right up there, Pascal promising a lot, and Yabuti really, really looking good for Japan. And uh, with a uh, eighth place for Manikova, the top eight are going to be uh, looking to take on the racing for the win. Rich, we came here looking for a lap record because it's our first visit. Have we got them? I think we have. Yoris Dordi taking the fastest lap in many league with a 36.564. Oliver Moran uh, taking the lap in under 23. And Sakaki Bauer and Corley taking it in the uh, women classes. So we've had an absolutely storming event here. Great first round. It's been a pleasure putting words to the action. Do make sure that you join us back in Brisbane, in Australia. But from Rich and from myself, Matt Payne, goodbye. goodbye.